important. Here you go. Again, November 30th, today is the last day to be able to, to RSVP right. for the Innovation Summit. Be a part of that. Support, support, learn, learn, and focus forward. <laughs> I think it's important with our, with our winner who was on set today is mm -hmm. that the program works. Right. The and success it's real. of the program. He said that I've done this before. Right. I've participated in many other programs before, but this one in particular, they coach you along the way. And he was open to that. And I think that's what I like. And that's what Miss Joy Richie Green, she said, listen, we don't let you go. We hold your hand. Definitely. We do. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much, Alex. Today was a great show. I want to remind show. you guys, Festival Noel is happening December 1st. That's tomorrow. tomorrow. So make sure to go out and support the Rand Nature Center. Um, go and enjoy all of the festivities. It's usually a very, very good evening. Um, just wonderful to be a part of that. And then Freeport Flash Friday is on December 15th. Listen. Listen. This is the end of the month. Let's hear it. So this is the time to begin to plan for whatever you're doing for the Christmas holidays. Freeport Flash Friday is a great opportunity for you to save, buy local, shop at home. That's right. Catch those flash sales, specials, deals, promotions, so that you can get the gifts that you want to have for Christmas or maybe, you know, the, the entire get the decorations island. for your home or whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to be able to, to benefit this Christmas holiday. So. Thank you for inviting us into your offices, your businesses, and your homes. We are always here for you. Grand Bahama's best talk show, Focus Forward. And until next time, I'm Wendy Sweeting. And I'm Alex Thompson. Informing you on the positive things that happen when you focus forward. You've been listening to Focus Forward, sponsored by Invest Grand Bahama. Like us on Facebook at Invest Grand Bahama Small Business Bureau to stay updated. And drop a business card at the Grand Bahama Port Authority receptionist desk to have your business featured on our show. Tune in next Thursday, same time, same place, for Focus, Focus Forward. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the news, the Economic Affairs Minister gives an overview on the economy of Grand Bahama. Plus, the Minister for Grand Bahama sheds light on talks surrounding the government's intention to acquire the International Bazaar. And serving time changed their minds. These young men are looking for help for finding employment. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Good evening and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. I'm Rumiko Knowles. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news tonight, the Minister of Economic Affairs, the Honorable Michael Halkita, is giving a recap on the Grand Bahama economy. While he admits that the island may have experienced some challenges, he says there are some revolutionary redevelopments in the pipeline that will aid in boosting the economy in a major way. Jolanda Thompson Everest joins us live now with the latest. Jolanda. According to Bahamas National Statistical Institute, the Bahamas has outperformed pre-pandemic levels. But how does Grand Bahama figure into this? The Minister of Economic Affairs, Michael Halkidis, says that while this island may have undergone economic instability, there are developing projects such as the Carnival Cruise Line and more, which gives the island the boost that it needs. As uh, you might know that Carnival is conducting town meetings across the, the Bahamas to um, encourage entrepreneurs to get involved in the project at its completion, business people, uh, vendors, etc. Uh, we're encouraged by the expansion underway at the Grand Bahama Shipyard and as well at the hospital that has started and there's some additional foundational works that are to be done, but we expect that to move full speed ahead in 2024 
as well as we're moving ahead uh, with the pro- project to upgrade the Grand Bahama International Airport. Alkid is noting that these developments will also help to fasten the growth on the island once there are no interruptions. Of course, as with everything, there are we are optimistic, uh, but we are also very cautious because we know we're in the hurricane zone and what damage that can inflict, as well as you know global uncertainty with the wars in Europe, as well as in the Middle East. Um, you know, we want to. It is our hope that those conflicts do not escalate and expand and cause disruption in the global economy. But as it relates to the redevelopment of the International Airport and the Grand Lucayan Hotel, he admits that they are still looking for the right investors. That we continue to look um, for an investor and um, it is important to look at that as well in conjunction with the redevelopment of the airport so that we can facilitate the airlift and so we expect that as we move into 2024 those discussions will continue and when asked on what are the requirements that the government seek when choosing an investor here's what he says they look for looking for an investor number one we're looking for someone with a plan um, that uh, comports with our vision for the economy so a plan that will create employment that will create ownership opportunities uh, for Bahamians um, so we're looking for a plan and then that would create good jobs with benefits. We're looking for individuals, of course, with the financial wherewithal to do the investment, to complete the investment and finance the investment uh, going forward. And we're looking for investors who will be uh, good corporate citizens. Now he says that as promised in the government's blueprint for change. The government remains committed to several initiatives, which includes a new hospital for the island, a new airport, home repairs, and developing a master plan in consultation with stakeholders for the future development of Grand Bahama Island. I'm Jolanda Thompson Everest. Back to you in studio, Romico. Thanks, Jolanda. Well, the Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie, recently responding to speculation surrounding the government's potential plans to acquire the International Bazaar site as the location for its proposed African Caribbean products marketplace. Moxie did not go into details, but said that the derelict bazaar buildings have always been a challenge for the island, and during this term, the government will move to ensure that something is done. It's something that I'm passionate about, ensuring that we get done during this term. And so we've been we've been speaking to the owners um, of, of the bazaar with a, with a view of doing something there. Um, but we'll see how that how that works out. But definitely, we're looking at the bazaar. We're also looking at the Harcourt properties and ensuring that the road between the bazaar and the Princess property, Harcourt property, is reopened. Switching gears now, the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian continues to cast a long shadow as many residents await home repairs. While making his contribution to the House of Assembly, the Minister of State and the Office of the Prime Minister, with responsibility for disaster preparedness management and reconstruction, the Honorable Miles LaRota noted that around 2,600 persons received assistance from the former administration. But the stark reality is that some damaged homes predate Hurricane Dorian, emphasizing the ongoing challenges in meeting the demand of home requests. I think the maximum assistance provided was $10,000. And, and I understand that the pie is only so big. I don't question the, the, the benevolence of, of, of the former government. But you're talking about individuals who are still needing help because they've lost all of their belongings. $10,000 was just not simply enough. And so we have yet again a lot of these same individuals who have had assistance is still applying for assistance. He says, however, two years in, despite financial limitations, the government remains committed to providing assistance to those waiting on the first or even second round of aid. Just want to assure those residents in Grand Bahama, in Abaco, we see, saw a damage in, in Bimini that some of the assistance that's being provided is not just for individuals who had suffered storm damage, but all people of, this, of the community who have received assistance from other governments who are just living in squalid conditions. You have the elderly, you have the infirmed, you have people by Pekinus who needs the help of the government, and the PLP has always been an organization, organization that would help those individuals. 
Heading now into news from police. Police on Abaco are investigating the circumstances surrounding the sudden death of a 61-year-old American visitor of War Minister Pennsylvania on Wednesday, November 29, 2023. Police reports indicate that it was around 12.45 p.m. when the deceased, who was a passenger on board a cruise ship, experienced breathing problems while snorkeling in waters off Castaway Key. Now, despite the lifeguard's rescue efforts and the administration of CPR, the visitor remained unresponsive. The victim was later transported back to the cruise ship where the ship's doctor examined him and pronounced him dead. Meanwhile, an autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. This matter remains under active investigation. Well, a second chance is hard to come by for a group of young men who once found themselves on the wrong side of the law after serving time in prison. They say they've left that life behind, but finding employment has been a challenge. Tonight, they are making an appeal to anyone who can help them. They've been incarcerated like for almost like three years. Incarcerated, they come out, I was placed on an ankle bracelet. Now that I'm out, I'm trying to better myself and not to be on the streets. I put in for this. Like, I take my time to go on all these places, try to get my copy man, I be and do all these stuff to have a job and still can and get it. Securing a fresh start is proving to be a formidable task for 28-year-old Tremaine Moss and Kevon McDonald. Having spent time behind bars, both are determined to distance themselves from that past, yet finding gainful employment has been a challenge. We gain these places. People, people ask me my name. When I tell them my name, they search up my name. They say, oh, Lord, you are a monitor. We can't give you no job. So it's like, it's like a problem. It's like a problem with me getting on a job because of my ankle bracelet. Mm -hmm. I ask in the, the public or whoever that if they could help, they say, help us young people out, especially for mine, because it's hard for us out here. Despite consistent efforts of filling out job applications, Moss says no one wants to hire him. I just need help, so I wouldn't have to say, oh, well, put my mind or be around people to say, oh, criminal-wise or whatever. McDonald recounts his last job interview where he chose to be forthright about his past mistakes. However, despite his honesty, he too feels as though individuals are unwilling to extend him a second chance. I had been honest to a lady and I tell her I was going to lock off her license by armor and certain stuff and she looked at me, but she looked at me weird and she just like bring your stuff back and I did. And I did. I see other people who I've been there with and who, who come last and still get job before me and like, I just like... Both young men have a strong determination to steer clear of any actions that might lead them back into incarceration. Simply put, they are eager to work. Boy, where if it's a construction or if I do roofing, I could cut grass, all these things I could do. You say same, but people still in, they ain't getting near it. Just for me right now, just side jobs, doing plumbing or electrician. That's just until I can find something. Moss celebrates his birthday in a few days and says the greatest gift would be a job. Unfortunately, both young men do not have cell phones, but say this is how they can be reached. What's this? I give my sister Shandy Campbell. That's my sister Shandy Campbell. That's her Facebook. That's her Facebook name. So if you go anything, reach out to Hundreds of turkeys distributed to a number of nonprofit organizations by the Grand Bahama Port Authority. That sport story, sports, and more. When the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition returns. You asked for it, you've got it. A new plant nursery fully loaded with everything you need and extended hours. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's begin to feel a lot like Christmas. Woo! It's only October. Christmas isn't as far as you think. If you start your layaway now, you'll get it right on time. Make layaway work for you. 50% down on furniture and bedding. Any amount down on mattresses. Six weeks to pay it off. No interest. Pay whatever you want whenever you want. Don't get caught on Christmas Day. Come to Island Bedding and lay it away.
At Harvey's Tech Bargains West Mall Plaza, find the best deals on smart TVs, laptops, game consoles, tablets, cell phones, cell phone accessories, gift cards, and so much more. Open Monday through Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. For designer shoes, sandals, handbags, and accessories, visit Steppin' Out Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, or WhatsApp 727-9098. Shipping available throughout the family of islands. Steppin' Out when you want to put your best foot forward. This Christmas is all on BTC. Sign up for one of our $64.99 or higher postpaid plans or one of our broadband bundles. Drive into 2024 with a brand new Kia Sonnet. Pay your bill in full and you can be a winner with our Christmas crab bag. Now to pay a $15 prepaid combo and get your chance to win Visa gift cards, travel and gas vouchers, and so much more. Terms and conditions apply. The Ministry of Tourism presents Rake and Scrape Tour Thursday, November 30th at Curry's on the Bay, Hepburn Town, 8 Mile Rock. Enjoy the sounds of the Count Juice Band by the Seaside. Fun kicks off 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's Rake and Scrape time at Curry's on the Bay, Hepburn Town. Don't miss the fabulous 25% off sale at Park and Shop Downtown this November 23rd, 24th, and 25th, excluding underwear and red tag items. The Kitchen and Bar is a company that specializes in kitchen cabinets and countertops. Um, we sell tile as well. We've been open for business for 15 and a half years now, serving the Grand Bahama community. We actually stock six lines of cabinetry. Um, we offer um, our toasted caramel, our white shaker, um, many other lines of cabinetry. So we have six other lines that we keep in stock and then many other varieties that we offer as well. We also do custom cabinetry as well. So we have a full-time installation staff that can install anything that you purchase from us professionally if you choose to, to use that service as well. So for us, it's about loving what we do. You know, we don't just sell um, products, you know, we sell quality. So we're open from 9 a.m. every day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, you know, if you want to contact us, you can call one of our numbers at 351-9661 or you can call 688-9661. Welcome back. They are doing their part this holiday season. The Grand Bahama Port Authority giving back in a major way to service organizations throughout the Grand Bahama community to also extend a helping hand to those in need. Each organization receiving five turkeys to give to the less fortunate this Christmas. Chairman of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Sarah St. George, confirming that they are giving out a total of 300 turkeys between the different organizations. Vice Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Houston also commending GBPA for this turkey initiative. We have to work with the fact that the price of everything has gone up, fuel, transport, goods, and most worryingly, the price of food. Again, I say a heartfelt thank you to you, Grand Bahamas, 
gatekeepers of goodwill, <laughs> and as always, the standard bearers of Christmas, and the heroes and heroines of our social fabric. To have an organization that is utilizing their funds to make sure that we improve the quality of life and we can give to those who are less fortunate is incredible. Um, and, and our issues, uh, we may be in different parts of the world, but our issues are still the same. Yes. People need each other to help yes. each other. Yes. And uh, it is my prayer that the Lord will continue to bless all of you um, to be a blessing to those who need our help in, the, in this world. Service organizations extending gratitude to the port for this great initiative that has been ongoing for years, noting that in spite of economic hardship and financial strains, this can now put smiles on some families' faces. We recognize that the Grand Bahama Port Authority has made a, a generous gesture to assist those and to help those that are in need. On behalf of Bahamas Red Cross, Grand Bahama Center, we want to say thank you for your continued support. We're out there every day and anytime someone does something uh, to help us so that we can give it to others, we are truly, truly grateful. I want to give God thanks, honor, and praise. Just allow each and every one of us to gather together here to receive these turkeys so we could be able to share with others that comes to our home and those who are in our home. We appreciate the consistency uh, from the year started. Uh, you've been in the community giving back. And uh, I just can't wait to see the smiles on the people's faces as they receive their donation. On behalf of the government of the Bahamas, I want to thank all of you for the work that you do sometimes unrecognized, but so important. Well, in our final edition of Women in Policing, we close out with Inspector Latoya Major Roll, a female officer who exemplifies a service above self. I am a 19-year veteran within the Royal Bahamas Police Force. I've served in both the uniform and plain clothes environment, having the opportunity to spend 14 of, of those years at the Criminal Investigation Department, where I served as the officer in charge of the sexual offenses section. I am proud to be a female police officer and serve my country. Over the many years, I've seen increases of female police officers in certain capacity, high-ranking capacity, and that is commendable. Because we are in a male-dominated environment, Often persons look at police officers as being males, but we do have some very strong, educated, and experienced females here in Grand Bahama and throughout the country. Shane Stubbs has your check on sports. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shane Stubbs, and welcome to Sports. Tonight, we start off with high school softball, where the BMES Warriors are looking pretty dominant in the Churchill Tenor Olds Michael Moss High School Softball League. The Warriors made quick work of the St. Paul Saints, rolling to a 20-0 victory. After another dominant win improved the team to 4-0, Coach Sandra Lang shares what's been working for the team. Been playing good defense, good offense, um, has some pretty seasoned players. A lot of the same players from last year. Some of them played on the same team, um, outside league, night league. And so we have a lot of newcomers, and they've been playing extremely well. With the season set to resume in January 2024, catcher Janair Russell says it will be about remaining consistent to keep the momentum going. Coming into the games, we really just want to um, put our best foot forward. We're just going into the games with a lot of energy and staying consistent with practice and just competing to the best of our ability. Meanwhile, the Jack Cable Wildcats and Tabernacle Falcons went down to the wire, but the Wildcats would prevail the final score in that one, 14 to 13. Next in sports, the Buffalo Treasure Try kicks off January 19th to the 21st. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Ginger Moxie, is excited about the event's potential and what it can mean for the island. Grand Bahama is no stranger to sports tourism. 
already hosting many major sporting events in recent years. Adding Buffalo Treasure Tri to the list of thriving sporting events further develops sports tourism in Grand Bahama and expands the opportunities for more guests to experience our breathtaking landscape and warm hospitality. Athletes will be treated to a cultural night serving as a meet and greet for the competitors. And lastly in sports, Shavano Buddy Heald and the Indiana Pacers are back in action this evening when they take on the Miami Heat at 7 o'clock. The Pacers are getting ready for the knockout round of the NBA's in-season tournament. They'll face the Boston Celtics on December 4th with a chance to move on to the semifinals. And that'll do it for sports tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shane Stubbs, and as always, be safe and be great. endless bank fees and long lines? The Grand Bahama Cooperative Credit Union is the solution to making your money work for you by providing you with free financial counseling, higher interest on savings plans, and lower interest rates on loans. Savings products such as Christmas and Vacation Club, fixed deposits, and annuity savings allow our members to prepare for today and tomorrow without all of the hassle. With GBCCU 352-4139. When you order a large Pizza Hut specialty pizza, you unlock a delicious deal. For a limited time, you can add a small one-topping pizza for just $2 more. Hawaiian, Supreme, Barbecue Chicken, Meat Lovers, and more flavors. And for just $2, you can double the deliciousness. But hurry, this mouth-watering twice-as-nice deal won't last forever. Call Pizza Hut Freeport at 352-9191 today. Get ready, Bahama. Take out your lighter. You heard the rumors, and the time is now. Saturday, December 16th. Burna Boy fans around the planet de definitely won't want to miss this once-in-a-lifetime party. The hottest global artists and one of the best voices of all time will be performing live in paradise in the Bahama. For updates about the event, check out the foreigncurrencypromotions.com or WhatsApp at 242-805-0390 or 242-809-1242 or email info at signatureproduction.net. Don't don't you miss it. Bar Blue next to Bell Channel Inn is celebrating their six-year anniversary. Enjoy drinking food specials on wine at Freeport's most stylish pub on the water with tasteful food and a fine atmosphere. The Freetown Heritage Festival Committee presents Bonfire Fridays from 5 until 10 p.m. at the Heritage Site in Freetown. Enjoy delicious food, exciting entertainment, fun for the entire family. Friday nights just got better in Freetown. Season's greetings from Esquire's Men's Freeport Store hours on Christmas Eve, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. to better serve you. Gift wrapping available on site. Visit Esquire's in the Lucayan Shopping Plaza or call 727-6367. List your home in Grand Bahama with H.G. Christie. Visit their new office in the Port Lucaya Marketplace. H.G. Christie, celebrating over 100 years of service. It's a Rick's Grape Christmas party Saturday, December 16th with the infamous Elon Moxie and Bimini boy Stevie S. It all goes down on Thackeray Street, Queens Highway, across from M&E Caterpillar. Super giveaways, bear and drink specials, music by DJ Governor, hosted by Daddy Steely. All brought to you by No Holds Bar and Lounge. Jump on your health and fitness goals with the Fitness Connections Transformation Challenge. We've already helped hundreds of people get closer to their health and fitness goals and achieve awesome results like you see here. You can scan the QR code to find out more. But let me tell you what all comes with the challenge. One, you get 20% off coupons to the Fitness Connection every two weeks. You get coaching calls with us on Zoom. You get accountability, us checking in on you. And you also get the chance to win $1,000 and other prizes if you are the winner. So you have, what do you have to lose? $50, you can have a chance to win 1000 and get the body of your dreams. So scan the code now, sign up, we're here to help you.
your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Bradford Stephen Saunders is our Facebook friend tonight. We extend the best wishes on his birthday. Thanks for your continued support. Please continue to enjoy your birthday. And we also want to say a special thanks to the management and staff here at Grand Lucine for hosting the ZNS Northern Service team over these past several weeks. My coworker says we'll probably be here for the next three months, but I, I don't think so. But we do extend uh, our appreciation and thank you. But that's going to do it for us here in the North. On behalf of the entire ZNS News team, I'm Amiko Knowles. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight continues. If you look around, you'd find that women, both in the public and the private sector, have excelled and have, if I could use the term, come into their own. And they have certainly been recognized by both public and private sector and given top positions. Tonight, the National Report, Closing the Gap in Climate Finance. Increasing the Supreme Court bench. The orange economy boosted. And in sports, wind in the sails of best of the best skippers. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. ZNest News is brought to you by BTC. Win over $100,000 in prizes when you sign up, top up, pay up, or watch and win with BTC. This Christmas is on us. Good evening, everyone. I'm Akash Lopinder, and this is The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks for tuning in. The government's ensuring the Bahamas remains at the fore of innovative finance initiatives. It's in its commitment to call for climate change and through a climate action, rather, and through a co collective deliberate approach, the Davis administration launched the Bahamas Sustainable Investment Program at the Clinton Global Initiative this past September. Today, though, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, now seen as a global climate champion, outlined the details of this multi-million dollar program to the world at COP28 in Dubai. Aldovis Munnings joins us live in studio with more on the Prime Minister's remarks. Good evening, Aldovis. The Prime Minister seems pretty optimistic about this initiative. Yes, Makushla, the Prime Minister certainly is. Good evening to you and good evening, Bahamas. Admitting that every nation faces climate risks, the Honorable Philip Davis told the world Wednesday that the country's highest point is Mount Alvernia in his beloved home of Cat Island that stands at roughly 207 feet. And the rest of the Bahamas lies within a few feet of sea level. Add to that, the Bahamas is located in the heart of Hurricane Alley. All reasons why the Bahamas is taking action and closing the gap in climate finance. This is where the Bahamas Sustainable Investment Program comes in. It's described as an ambitious initiative that will strategically mobilize high quality investments to meet environmental, social and governance indicators, as well as serve as a demonstration of private sector actors and government working together for strong climate action. And with over a third of our national debt resulting from the impact of hurricanes, Prime Minister Davis underscored that the Bahamas, like other high-income countries, desperately needs financing to support recovery and adaptation. Our priorities for this fund include spending to make our infrastructure more climate resilient, our transition to clean energy, conservation of our coastal zones, reduction in biodiversity loss, regenerative agriculture, carbon sequestration, and participation in natural asset-backed carbon credit programs. Blended finance is a smart way 
to close the climate financing gap at a time when solutions cannot be postponed. Partnering with its strategic advisors, Resilience Capital Ventures, government will work with regional and global capital market leaders to underwrite and create this innovative financing facility. Governments already engaged with the Clinton Global Initiative on this commitment to action. BSIP is an innovative, is an innovative financial program which consists of three pillars. The Bahamas Sustainable Investment Strategy, the Bahamas Sustainable Investment Facility, the Bahamas Sustainable Investment Infrastructure. These three pillars formulate a national strategy for sustainable investment, prioritized investment projects, an investment facility with a target of 500 million US dollars, and upgraded inf institutional infrastructure. According to Prime Minister Davis, another way to say small island nation is large ocean state. And get this, the country's seagrass meadows, which cover an astonishing 97,000 square kilometers, appear to be absorbing more carbon than the Amazon rainforest. He revealed officials have been mapping seagrasses with help from scientists and an ocean predator. Tiger sharks are a critical part of our underwater surveying team. That's right. They swim through our waters, wearing cameras, and sending back data points. It's always good to help apex predators on this side. <laughs> Those sharks are going to help us become the first country in the world to issue new carbon credits. Prime Minister Davis invited prospective partners on funding and financing or by providing technical and advisory expertise that the door for collaboration is wide open. And as critical climate milestones take place this week at COP28, the government is signaling that partnerships are key to address the climate crisis and advance sustainable development. Reporting live in studio for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Altaviz Munnings. Makushla, back to you. Well, thanks, al -Safis. Back here at home, the Davis administration seeking to keep its promise to enhance and stimulate the country's orange economy. It's preparing to introduce a suite of new reforms that will impact creatives, artists, and many others who make a living in this sector. Corval Pyfram has the story. The Attorney General calls this the next major reform project of the Davis regime. This is a comprehensive reform and modernization of our intellectual property regime in the Bahamas. Intellectual property serves as an effective policy tool in unlocking local creative, inventive and innovative potential. This suite of reforms is being advanced by the administration as a boost for the country's orange economy, giving greater protection, opportunity and resources to those in that sector. We will advance new legislation and associated regulations that will address copyright protection, false trade descriptions, geographic indications, integrated circuits, protection of new plant varieties for our agribusiness industries, patent protections, and trademark protections. These reforms, the Attorney General says, will stimulate the transfer and use of technology and creative works and encourage fair competition, thereby promoting the creation of wealth and fostering national, social, cultural and economic development in the country. Our government believes intellectual property protections is a foundational element of economic empowerment of Bahamians. He says these will be comprehensive reforms that will launch the Bahamas into the forefront of intellectual property protections for citizens, creating the necessary element for economic empowerment in areas of new creations. Consultations with relevant stakeholders, the Attorney General says, have begun. These types of industry consultations will continue to better expose Bahamians to the benefits of protecting their creative assets, utilizing intellectual property protections and the laws. This is one of the most complex areas of regulatory legal reform, the Attorney General says. The Bahamas will join international conventions to ensure intellectual property rights protection internationally. Additionally, an office for the administration of intellectual property will be created. Legislation is expected to be brought to Parliament before the spring of 2024. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corvell Pyfram.
Well, speaking of reforms, long-standing matters to be heard faster. Both governments have lamented the time taken for cases to be tried, delays which Carmichael MP and attorney Keith Bell acknowledges has led to suspects being granted bail and the consequential cries of the public. Proposed legislation, though, sees increasing the size of the Supreme Court from 20 to 25 justices as a viable solution. Over the past decades, the Bahamas has experienced exponential growth, both in terms of our population and economy, thereby placing tremendous pressure on our Supreme Court. On the civil side, Madam Speaker, we have seen the number of land matters, divorce cases, and complex civil cases soar. These cases require more and more judicial time and has resulted in unacceptable delays in litigation. I am advised, Madam Speaker, that trial dates before the Supreme Court are more than 12 months away. As a matter of fact, there is one that's being given in 2025. That means, Madam Speaker, that justices have no available dates next year. On the criminal side, serious offenses are tried before the Supreme Court for decades. from the Adrian Gibson corruption trial. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. There's more news in a moment. This portion of the news is brought to you by Folk Hall Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. You have enough things to worry about. Living in a world that can seem opposite of the things you're trying to accomplish. We're here to let you know that you don't have to go at it alone. Choose peace of mind. Choose comfort. Choose CB. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. This Christmas is on BTC. All you have to do is sign up, top up, pay up, or watch and win with us. Sign up for one of our $64.99 or higher postpaid plans or one of our broadband bundles and get a chance to drive into 2024 with a brand new Kia Sonnet. Pay your bill in full and you can be a winner with our Christmas Crab Bag. Activate a $15 prepaid combo and get your chance to win Visa gift cards, travel and gas vouchers, and so much more. Watch our Hallmark Movie of the Week for a chance to win a prepaid Visa gift card. Make BTC your choice this Christmas with all $100,000 in prizes. All you have to do is sign up, top up, pay up, or watch and win with BTC. Visit any BTC location today. Terms and conditions apply. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets, at KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. Did you know the National Insurance Act provides for an insured pregnant woman to access her maternity benefit before or after delivering her baby? Expecting mothers are entitled to 13 weeks of maternity leave, which can be applied for by completing the Med2 claim for maternity benefit form. Section A is completed by a registered physician or certified midwife. The medical practitioner certifies the expected or actual confinement period, signs the form, and affixes their official stamp. Forms completed by medical practitioners outside of the Bahamas must be accompanied by the physician's business card. In sections B and C, the claimant provides personal unemployment details, declares their last day at work, signs and dates the form. The Med2 form is always accompanied by Form Med4 or Employer Certificate, which is completed by the employer. Both the Med2 and accompanying Med4 forms must be submitted within three months from the first day of confinement. Forms submitted outside of this period are considered late and will be subject to review by the Late Claims Committee. 
Before submitting forms, check that all fields are accurately completed. Incomplete forms or forms with incorrect information will delay the processing of your benefit application. For more information, visit the NIB website at nib-bahamas.com. This holiday season, join us for an island game Christmas Cashmas experience like no other. Ho, 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 ho! It's that time of year again, and we have something extra special for you. We're giving away a blue gift box, and it's filled with magical surprises. Santa and his gifts are ready to make your Christmas Cashmas dreams come true. Day, a new surprise awaits thanks to our 12 days of Cashmas. Here we go. Mercy's doing it big this year. Cashmas time with extra chair. 12 days of merry winnings from your friends at Island Day. Friends we trust. This Christmas, we invite you to celebrate the 12 days of Cashmas with us. Are you ready to unwrap the magic? And you can win some awesome stuff at Percy's Island. The National Tripartite Council joining hands with the national trade unions, the Department of Labor, and the international labor organizations to ratify the C-190 conventions. What that means is that the group will seriously deal with violence and harassment in the workplace. While no complaints about harassment and violence have been reported, Minister of Labor and the Public Service, the Honorable Pio glover is hoping this new policy to protect the workforce from violence. 190, Convention 190, is a timely and relevant convention that will make a difference for many Bahamian women. And actually, it will make a difference for Bahamians in general because we expect that the biggest impact will be the creation of a safer environment for women. But we know that men have come forward and advised that they've been harassed and victimized as well. When it comes to how we interact in workplaces, and the way that some leverage positions of authority to their own benefit in inappropriate ways, we do have some work to do nationally. Even in larger organizations with robust HR policies, robust HR departments, these issues still emerge, and sadly they aren't taken as seriously as they should be. Well, after days on the witness stand, attorneys in both the defense and prosecution teams in the Adrian Gibson corruption trial today wrapped up cross-examination and re-examination of water and sewage engineer Deidre Taylor. During cross-examination, attorney Ian Cargill suggested to Taylor, among other things, that after being arrested by police as a suspect in the case, she had one choice, do what the police wanted her to be charged, do what the police wanted or be charged. But Taylor refuted that suggestion, testifying that as a law-abiding citizen, she respects the police, and so answered their questions. Cargill also suggested the work done on the water tanks of the Water and Sewage Corporation was no different from any other government project at the corporation. Taylor agreed, prompting the director of public prosecutions, Cordell Frazier, to ask if she had gotten any information that this was a government project. She said no. The trial continues before Senior Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson. Well, what prompted three men to rob and abduct someone they knew is the focus of an intense investigation here in the Capitol. The time of the incident, 5.30 last evening, the area, Milton Street. Police said it was at that time and place that the victim was intentionally struck off his motorbike. The alleged culprits, no strangers to him. Police said the trio pulled out handguns and forced the victim into the trunk, drove him to Baltic Avenue off Parkade Road, where he was robbed of cash and his cell phone before releasing him. Now, luckily, patrolling officers witnessed the incident that led to the arrest of the three suspects, ages 33, 30, and 27. Meantime, anyone with additional information about this incident should contact 911 919 or the Criminal Investigation Department, and that's at 502-9991. This segment of the news brought to you by the best of the best regatta, November 30th through December 3rd in Montague Bay. Music man. Marcellus Hall joins us in studio with a check on what's coming up in sports. Marcellus? 
Coming up in sports for this evening, best of the best officially underway. Details just ahead in sport. Did you know that strawberries are grown right here in the Bahamas? Well, today we're venturing all the way to North Address at Chick Charney Farms, where we're going to get the ins and outs of this particular crop. I'm Leah Cooper, and this is Good to Grow. The fall season's an extremely exciting time for Chicharney Farms in North Andrus as it prepares one of its most popular crops. When we started marketing our strawberries um, about two years ago and talking about local strawberries in the market, people were like, no, it's, impo it's impossible. Strawberries don't grow in the Bahamas. Well, we have um, grown strawberries successfully now for about three and a half years. CEO of Chicharney Farm, Shivara Aeneas Roker, gives us a bit of insight into what goes into successfully planting her strawberries. So ensuring that you get good, I'm talking about solid crowns is the first thing, which is the small plants. So we don't start them from seed. Lots of persons ask us, how do you start them? We get them from crowns, so we source them from a, a reputable company, um, and then we import them here to the Bahamas. And of course, getting them in the ground is very important, but knowing the right time, like the peak time to put them in the ground, um, and ensuring that they uh, get lots of water. So the most important thing is lots of water during the first couple of weeks of putting them now, and consistent watering, like three to four times a day, ensuring that they get enough water so that you can promote growth and start to get those green tops coming in. Then, of course, you would have to feed them a little bit. Of course, we use an organic fertilizer base for feeding our plants and ensuring that you inspect them always for pests, ensuring that they're not being attacked by pests or caterpillars or anything of that sort. She likens the work that goes into her strawberries to caring for a newborn baby. They are super sensitive. Honestly, I lose sleep sometimes at night thinking about these strawberry plants, okay? Because we've had two seasons where right at the peak of our harvest, we got lots of rain and lost our entire crop. So each year we keep trying, the berries are getting better and better. We're, we're producing high quality good berries, but we're always concerned about pests and, and other, you know, other things that can throw off um, our strawberries from growing um, um, and to the best quality that we can. All right, so what is a good to grow episode without actually getting your hands dirty and toiling in the soil? So Shavara is gonna show us how we plant these strawberries. Wow. Okay. Okay, now I was trying to try one on my own. So I'm gonna pierce the plastic mulch like a professional farmer. I need to open this a bit more. And then I'm gonna make sure. Mm -hmm. Planted strawberry <laughs> by a newbie <laughs> strawberry farmer. <laughs> <laughs> and according to Roker Aeneas, she's expecting a pretty huge harvest. So we just planted 3,000 plants uh, within the last two weeks. And so usually those strawberry plants put out runners. We can also plant those. So imagine each strawberry plant producing about 8 to 10 runners. So it can now double or quadruple our crop. So we can have up to 9,000, 10,000 plants easily this season. Harvest time is expected during the first or second week in January, and the Good to Grow team will be back in North Andrus to finish off what we started. Keeping you in the know with Good to Grow, I'm Leah Cooper. The trouble it might drag you down. If you get lost, you can always be found. Just know you're not alone. I'm gonna make this place your home
welcoming the Christmas holiday in grand style. An official tree lighting ceremony taking place tonight in the city square, a time-honored tradition that continues to pull Bahamians from all walks of life. Lloyd Allen is there. Lloyd? That's absolutely right, Makushla. Tonight is all about welcoming Christmas to the Bahamas. We're here at the city square, and a number of persons have converged for the official national tree lighting ceremony. It's a traditional event that many persons flock here to witness, and tonight standing with us is acting permanent secretary at the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture, Montez Williams. Uh, Mr. Williams, of course, an exciting evening tonight. Yes, thank you, Lloyd. It is an exciting evening, the start of the Christmas season as far as we're concerned. It's the national Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Morning. Now, of course, tonight a number of persons are here, but I think most persons are really excited to see what this tree is going to look like this year. What can you tell us? Well, well, you can get a sneak peek. It's just not lit, but people can see the decorations, and they would notice that we've chosen to decorate the tree with colors reminiscent of our national flag. This tree was decorated by the staff of the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. We used to decorate the tree some decades ago, so we're returning back to that, where the staff are excited about doing something to bring in the Christmas chair and something for the country. And then also, uh, this, uh, this event tonight, uh, there is for about an hour and a half, and we have several groups like this young group uh, that's going to be performing in a moment. Uh, how important was it to get these uh, participants uh, to uh, take part in tonight's event? Well, many of our participants would have been in our E. Clement Beth Bethel National Arts Festival. So we try to give exposure to all of our young artists in particular and any cultural artisan. So you'll see a, a variety of art work on display. Now, finally, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, tonight, uh, like many persons, I'm sure they're looking forward to seeing what this tree is going to look like. Uh, tell us again, what time can we expect these uh, lights to be turned on and how long for the season will they be on? Well, they should turn on at the end of the program, which we estimate to be at 7.30. And I believe it's, this program is going to be aired immediately after, by delay, on after the news tonight. So people can watch and see. And once it's ablaze, I'm sure people will be much appreciative of the wonderful artwork and the decorations. And just a little sneak peek, of course, uh, this tree will be lit up until December 26th, is that correct? No, January 6th. January 6th. January 6th is Epiphany, the season of Epiphany, so Christmas actually ends the 5th, the day before. Well, some great news there, of course, and again, we're reporting here from Roston Square, where dozens have turned out to witness this year National Tree Lighting Ceremony. Reporting for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. Makushla, back to you in studio. Some good stuff there, Lloyd. The Scotia Bike, meantime, supporting Bahamian culture in a big way. Apart from teaming up with the National Junkanoo Committee to stage the People's Choice Junkanoo Practice Rush Out this evening in Roston Square, the financial institution is donating $75,000 to the NJC towards the major Junkanoo parades. NJC co-chair Kishleen Smith says the gesture, calls the gesture rather extraordinary. And so it's wonderful that you've also engaged the possibility of Grand Bahama, which is another island in the Bahamas. And we're looking forward to other corporate citizens waking up, understanding the importance of culture and trying at their best to assist us however possible. Well, now time for the poll question of the week. And this week we're asking, should the government purchase the Grand Bahama Port Authority? You can chime in on our social media handles. In case you missed the news or want to stay ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. It's that time of year again, and Bahamas Welding and Fire has everything you need to transform your home this holiday season. Tis the season to be jolly, trim the tree, hang the family stockings, and gift some Christmas chair to those you love. From assorted ribbons, garlands, Christmas trees, wreaths, LED lights, holiday props, stockings, and skirts, BWF has the largest selection of all things holly and jolly. And for Santa's little helpers, from kids' bikes to motorized toys, we'll make all their dreams come true. Our helpful staff is waiting to see you. Shop today at BWF. We have all the top brand name tools and kitchen appliances too. Visit our store on number 13 Wilton Street and see for yourself. BWF, we're more than just our name.
the fastest fiber covering the Bahamas. Do more, yeah. way more, yeah. history more. Yeah. With me. I'm Cornell Pie from It's Giving Time. Just as the holiday season is quickly descending upon us, BTC is trying to assist organizations that help others and make positive contributions in our community. Organizations like UB Cares. It's so important that we support our students and, and they come with various needs and that we do our part as corporate citizens so that they can focus on their studies. And to me, that's what this is all about. Happy to be here today really, really proud of this moment for BTC and to contribute to UB Cares and to make the student's life just a little bit easier for them to focus on their studies and go further and, and higher. So thank you. Part of student development is ensuring that all of our students have a holistic approach to education. And that, in, that includes, you know, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical. Uh, so um, as a part of student affairs, our job is to ensure that we provide our students with any resources. Um, and this donation definitely helps uh, further our desire to help and support our students along the way. So we're grateful and we're, we're, we're continuously happy and, and, and excited for the continuous support that BTC normally shows the University of Bahamas. Being good community partners is who we are at BTC. Heart, like we say all the time, isn't just something you have, it's something you share. UB Cares, we heart you. Faster, stronger, more reliable, together, BTC Unstoppable. I'm Corvel Pai from Be Well and Be Back Here next BTC Connection. Fiber is here. Sign up today at btcbahamas.com. Mario thought he could have his cake and eat it too. He almost found out the hard way that if you don't insure your home for the full replacement value, when it comes time to make a claim, you won't get the full payout. It's called the condition of average. If your $200,000 home is destroyed by a hurricane, but you only insured it for $100,000, half the value, you'll only get half of that $100,000 payout. Actually, less than that, because there's also a deductible, which will be deducted from your payout. Check your home insurance policy for the Condition of Average Clause and ask your insurance agent or broker how Condition of Average would affect you. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas, protecting the interests of policyholders. I know you ain't spending no more money on this boat. Ain't this what you drowned in last year? I understand. How I drowned last year if I hear running on foolishness with you? Where, where you going now? Morning, Q. For what? For best of the best. Why you keep putting questions to me? Over 90 boats and over 200 sailors coming from all around the Bahamas to compete for the largest sailing port ever. You better pray I take you the best of the best. You ain't got to worry for that because you was the best of the worst. Anyway, while this woman running on, I will see you on to the 2023 best of the best regatta. Woman, you don't see me talking? come before them. Come on. 
training stakeholders to recognize the signs of psychological and emotional trauma. The goal of a psychological first aid training session held at the Ministry of Social Services hearing room. The one day training session held in light of National Women's Week. Officials say given the threat of violence against women and girls, it's important citizens are trained to recognize the signs. Facilitating the training were members of the Bahamas Psychological Association. Here's facilitator Deitra Bethel on why this kind of training is so important. We are committed to training persons to assist persons in need. So that in and of itself is some of the, uh, well, one of the major reasons why we certainly are, are interested in, in being a part of this and excited in being a part of this process today. Stay with us. The National Report returns in a moment. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. I'm grateful for my family, my health, and for the specials at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. Par excellence parboiled rice, five pounds, three ninety-nine. Rainbow corn beef, twelve ounce, two thirty-nine. Best value whole kernel corn, fifteen ounce, ninety-nine cents. Chicken leg quarters, ten pound buy, ninety-nine cents per pound. Lamb chops, four ninety-nine per pound. Great holiday meals start at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. Samantha's always on point. She doesn't miss a thing. When she signs up for any insurance policy, she reads all the fine print. She knows what's covered, what's not covered, and she's aware of her deductibles. When it comes to insurance, it pays to know your policy. Review every insurance policy so you know what you're covered for. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas. in a name. 
Well, it seems everything if you consider the fact that the Davis administration is seeking to change the name Hall Key, a 700-plus acre island at the southern tip of Exumas, to Torch Key. The government reasons that a name change will better play into marketing and branding strategies. I am advised that the island is slated for redevelopment into a mixed-use luxury resort and residential development complete with an 18-old golf course, 81 slip marina and channel, 161 residential lots, 40, ho 40 hotel key re keys resort, marina village, and a runway with an international civil, civil aviation designation. The project is expected to cost some $170 million and will create some 300 to 425 jobs during its planned 8 to 12 year build out with 250 to 300 permanent jobs. Well, it's now time for Family Island weather, and for that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Bakishal. We are under clear skies this evening. Temperature 78 degrees. The relative humidity at 70%. We have easterly winds at 12 miles per hour. The barometric pressure 1,018.0 millibars. That is 30.08 inches. And your temperatures around the family violence this evening, they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. 71 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and Green Tolkien, and Abaco, Marsh, at 74 degrees. 70 Seven in the Berry Islands, Alistair Bimini, 80 degrees, Harper Island, 78. Roxanne Lutra, 79 degrees, 78 degrees in Fresh Creek, Central Andros. We're picking up some 79s in Kemp Space on Andros and Black Point Exuma. 82 degrees in Georgetown Exuma, Room Key and San Salvador at 80 degrees, 82 in Ragged Island, Clarence Down, Long Island, and Crooked Island. Betsy Bay, McGuana, 78, Ackland, 78, Machi Chad, Nagua, 81, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 82 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. In the northwestern islands tonight, easterly winds once again at 10 to 15 knots and the wave fights two to four feet. High tide, that will take place at 9.56 tonight. Now for the central and southeastern islands tonight, easterly winds a bit stronger at 15 to 20 knots, so caution flags at place for your boaters as those wave fights will be around four to seven feet over the ocean. And then tomorrow, which is Friday through Saturday, the winds take on a southeast component at 10 to 15 knots, wave fights at two to four feet. The high tide will occur at 10.20 in the morning with the low tide at 4.55 in the afternoon. For the central and southeastern islands, Again, Friday through Saturday, southeast winds at 12 to 18 knots away, fights 3 to 6 feet. So we will maintain those caution flags for both the central and southeastern islands through Saturday. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures. And they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. <laughs> Temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Shorts, but stay tuned. Your extended weather forecast is still ahead. Want to have your voice heard? Send your letters to the editor to digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. Share your thoughts on current events or positive stories within your community. That's digital media at ZNSBahamas.com. We want to hear from you.
Michael? Michael is an amazing boss. He has an outstanding work ethic where if somebody doesn't show up to work, he's going to call, make sure that you're all right, make sure everything is good with you, man, because that's just the type of person he is. Now, because Michael is such a good boss, I go into CBS Bahamas, and I'm going to get him one of those Milwaukee drills for a Christmas gift. CBS Bahamas is the best place to get your Christmas gifts for your friends and family. CBS Bahamas. Janae's Chesapeake Road Christmas Wonderland is open under the Big Ten. Get your Christmas trees in pink, frosted, green, or white in a variety of sizes. Musical Christmas LED and laser lights. A large variety of tree ornaments. Lighted angels and Santa tree toppers. Bright and lively colored Christmas balls in all sizes. Garlands, wreaths, tree skirts, stockings, and lots more. Add flowers, picks, and decorative mesh to brighten up your home or office this holiday season. And don't forget the toys at Janae's Chesapeake Road. Check our selections online at www.janae's.com. The most important thing in life is family. And whenever you need reliable advice, you look to the people you know you can trust. At J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, we earn our clients' trust every day. Whether it's home, motor, travel, or commercial insurance, we've got you covered. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.J., Johnson Insurance, peace of mind. to do is sign up, top up, pay up, or watch and win with us. Sign up for one of our $64.99 or higher postpaid plans or one of our broadband bundles and get a chance to drive into 2024 with a brand new Kia Sonnet. Pay your bill in full and you can be a winner with our Christmas crab bag. Activate a $15 prepaid combo and get your chance to win Visa gift cards, travel and gas vouchers, and so much more. Watch our Hallmark Movie of the Week for a chance to win a prepaid Visa gift card. Make BTC your choice this Christmas with all $100,000 in prizes. All you have to do is sign up, top up, pay up, or watch and win with BTC. Visit any BTC location today. Terms and conditions apply. This is ZNS Total Sports. ZNS Total Sports brought to you by Sands Beer, who reminds you to recycle your beer bottles for cash in Nassau, Grand Bahama, and now Abaco and Eleuthera. Welcome to your ZNS Total Sports Check here on a Thursday, everybody. I'm Marcelo Sawa. Well, the best of the best regard are now officially underway as sailing activities got started this morning on Montague For sure, Charles Fisher has the details from an exciting beginning to the competition. An early start to the first day of sailing. Mix and mingling, I guess they're working out on race strategies. Still some work to be done at the site, but I'm sure it will be ready for tonight. A record number of salutes docked in the harbor participating in this year's best of the best in A, B, C, D, and E class. First race out was the E class. And as usual, sailing fans who could not make it out on the water, watching on the big screen. Back to the results of the first E-Class Series race, Lady Kayla taking the top spot, followed by Mako, One Bahamas, Judgment D, and Wave Maker rounded out the top five. Stefano Kemp watching from the sideline and for a reason. Usually sails in all three classes, but this year, not so. 
We had some uh, damages happen to two of the boats, Queen Drusilla and King and Knights. We had some severe damages, so we were in the process of getting it ready, getting it, but nevertheless, time ran up on us, and so we wasn't able to come out. But uh, nevertheless, we we going to be participating in the A class with the new courageous. For a person like you who like to be on every class, too, this must be disappointing if you not to get out there. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a, it's a big disappointment, you know. Um, normally, every regard I'm on A, B, and C, but uh, this the one chance I get to, in years to actually sit down in the bay and, and watch the other races. But like I say, we're going to be out there in A-class, full force. How well, does it feel to be watching from the sideline? Well, <laughs> it's a new feeling. <laughs> I could say it's weird because I'm not used to it. But but uh, I think I'd be able to see some things that i I not be able to see when I'm out there. So you know, I'm going to enjoy, enjoy this one time that I have. Uh, to watch the race from the bay. One day down and three to go. Who will be sailing on Sunday when the best of the best will be decided? There's only one way to find out. Come on down and enjoy some of the activities, not only on the seas, but also on the shore. Sunday, the final day, covering the best of the best for ZNS Toll Sports. I'm Charles Fisher. Shifting our attention now to soccer, where the women's national soccer team back on the pitch yesterday afternoon, looking to advance in the qualifiers of the CONCACAF Road to the Gold Cup. Amazon Knowles was standing by with the details. Let's take a look. Up to this point, the Bombers women's national soccer team would be unsuccessful in their matches in this window of the CONCACAF Road to the Gold Cup. The Bombers yesterday playing host to the U.S. Virgin Islands, hoping to change their fate here on home soil at the newly renovated Roscoe Davies developmental soccer field. To the pitch, it would be a shaky start for the 2-4-2 as the USPI would strike first blood thanks to this goal in the 16th minute by Makish Taylor. A significant one for them as it was their first in six contests. USPI up one zip. However, that lead would be short-lived. Fast forward to the 31st minute, the bomb is on the attack. Dimitri McClure with a dangerous cross here that would see a collision between the USVI keeper and Diane Malis for the Bahamas. But Kenyonique Thompson would swoop in and find the back of the net for the equalizer. Thompson's first career international goal ties things up at one apiece. However, that would be all the offense the Bombers would be able to muster up in this one. In the 34th minute, USVI pressing. Bianca Canizio off the half volley would manage to just elude Bayman goalkeeper Kendi Elton to put USVI up 2-1. to one. The Bombers would have several close shots on goal in the second half, but as luck would have it, it just wouldn't be so. The Bombers, despite a valiant effort, falling to the U.S. Virgin Islands 2-1. to one. The game was a little sketchy in the front when we first started. Uh, we were looking for our feet. We decided we came up with a plan, plan A, and then we tried plan B, and plan B started to work. And I think we started to rely too much on plan B. We had some opportunities that we were unable to put away, but we were able to get one. For the Bombers' only goal scorer in this one, she hopes the performance is a sign of bigger things to come. Man, it feels too good, because I know the last time that I played, man, I said, man, I know we had a lot of opportunities to score a goal, so this goal, it felt so good. It just felt good, and the team knew we deserved this goal, but, you know, we fell short in the end, but it was fine. We have a lot of work to do, but this is a start. And for veteran Karen Wirt, she was certainly proud of the team. The effort has been amazing. I mean, we've been practicing for months. Four nights a week, the ladies have been coming out here, putting the time in, putting the work in. I think it showed in the game today. I think most of them played their hearts out. Officials say they plan to build on the momentum of this window as the future is indeed bright with a relatively young pool of players and coaches. For Zenith Hole Sports, I'm Amajal Knowles. And that's your look at sports for you here on this Thursday. Don't go anywhere. We do have that Thursday weather report coming up after this. ZNS Total Sports brought to you by Sands Beer, who reminds you to recycle your beer bottles for cash in Nassau, Grand Bahama, and now Abaco and Eleuthera. This is ZNS Total Sports.
for the next 50 days, 50 lucky winners will be getting $30,000 in cash and prizes. $30,000? 30. How you win? All you have to do is purchase $25 or more in fuel or a $25 and up Rubus gift card and you enter the win. Take a photo of your receipt and you can upload it via our QR code, Rubus Bahamas Facebook page or our website. Don't forget, you need your receipt in order to win. Thank you. $500 on the Visa card, I'll buy everything. But I got to turn my light on. I need a gas.